Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. I'm excited to be attending and recording shows at Rainmaker 2016. You can join keynote speaker Gary Vanderchuk along with modern revenue leaders at the only conference dedicated to the sales development industry, March 7th to 9th in Atlanta. Get tickets now to receive cutting-edge sales content from thought leaders, learn best practices during breakout sessions, and come network with the world's top sales influencers. If you use the promo code BTFS and the number 30, you'll get 30% off. More information is on the show website at buildingthefutureshow.com. I'm also going to be at the Business Rocks Tech, Music, and Investment Summit recording shows live in Manchester, England, April 21st and 22nd, where Steve Wozniak is headlining. More information about the summit is on the show website at buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Matesh Patel, founder and CEO of Privy. Matesh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing is is, uh, very cool. And, you know, I wish more and more um, companies would actually use your technology. But before we kind of maybe get into what what is Privy, maybe let's uh, get to know you a little bit better and kind of cover your background and kind of where you grew up. Sure, Kevin. So I would give you about five plus minute overview, sure. covering twenty or so years of my life. Okay, awesome. I was I was born in India, uh, in the western part, in the same state as Gandhi. I was very good very in cool. school growing up, so high school was really no challenge for me. Okay, and you know what happens to uh, kids that are good in high school? They have all this spare time that they used to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I did the same thing in my early life. But eventually, wisdom kicked in, and I decided to do something creative with my time. So I joined a technology school at the age of 16. Oh, at wow. At the same time. Yeah. And I was also going to high school at the same time. Very cool. I imme- yep, yep. And I immediately fell in love with uh, technology. I realized that my brain was wired for that kind of stuff. Okay. So few weeks into the uh, into the technology school, I got in trouble again because I unlocked all the games by hacking into our teacher's account. <laughs> <laughs> but I also got some credit for that, you know. So, sure, um, they can't really I get think... mad if you, you if you're kind of advancing in technology, right, and and doing well already. <laughs> Exactly. I, I told him that should be a test. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So what happened after that is because I was good, I graduated from that technology school the same time as I graduated from high school, and I graduated with the highest grades they had. Wow. So That's I, awesome. I, yep, yep. I immediately started working there and uh, started teaching other students. I also worked on a project for the Indian government. So so you were, what, like 16 at the time and you're teaching? Uh, I was 18. I, 18, I joined at okay. 16, I, yeah, I graduated at 18, uh, same time as my high school. And right, then right. immediately after that, I started teaching there. That's awesome. Yeah, that was that was good times, good old times. So, so what kind of stuff were you teaching, teaching, just out of curiosity? So these were the days of, um, uh, are you familiar with DOS programming? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, and basic. Totally. So these were, yeah, these were those programming languages, the, the early generation. And in order to program in those languages, you really had to put your brain to work. For I sure. Mean, if you missed one comma, you, you took hours to figure that out. Yep. So Yeah, debugging tools really weren't the same back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then my life takes a turn. Okay. Right around that time, my family had a chance to come to America. And this was one of those opportunities, take it or leave it type of thing. My parents weren't so interested in coming to America, but they thought it would be valuable for me uh, to come here for my future. Sure. The challenge was, I didn't speak English, nor I knew anything about this country. Really? Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Now, 
this is back in the uh, 1990s, okay? So that was the condition. Nowadays, a lot of people are very advanced and the world has shrunk. It's a different story now. But back then, I didn't know a whole lot about the country. Sure. So my, my dad did something that most fathers would do. He made a deal with my uncle, who was well settled here in New Jersey. And the deal was, I'm going to send my son to you. He doesn't speak English. He doesn't know anything about the country. Help him go to college. He's brilliant. He's going to do wonderful in college. And when he's able to, he would repay you for everything you've done. Okay, it's interesting. So my uncle agreed to that. And next thing you know, I'm here in New Jersey. Wow. Now, what we did not know is that this uncle had invested in a motel owned by my other uncle in Georgia, and this motel was going bankrupt. Okay. So they, they needed free slave labor. And I was a perfect candidate because I didn't speak English, nor I knew anything about the country. Sure. So I was shipped off to Georgia, and for the following year or more, I was basically working there free of charge. Okay, interesting. It was difficult. For, yeah, it was difficult for me to get in touch with my parents and tell them the story because this is back in those days. You didn't have cell phones. Sure. You couldn't contact people easily unmonitored because all the calls went through the switchboard of that motel. Okay. okay. Wow. So I I couldn't escape. I couldn't contact anyone. But what I did do is in that time period, I learned just enough to be able to escape one day. And I did. I escaped in a rusty old car. Wow. Only to realize that I was now homeless. Sure. Wow. That's incredible. Holy. But trust me, I was the happiest homeless guy you've ever met. Sure. Like, I, can, I can't even imagine. Like, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Like, good, on, good for you. Yeah, but, but what happened after that is, Kevin, in a few years after that, we were actually very, very tough because I worked whatever odd jobs I could. I saved whatever money I could. And it was very turbulent, very, very problematic for me. Sure. But I did get through that time period. And uh, finally, I saved enough money uh, to be able to come back to New Jersey and go to another technology institute and graduate from there uh, with the money that I had saved. And I graduated with honors. Oh, congrats. That's, that's awesome. Like, wow, that's, that's incredible. But why did you go back to New Jersey? Um, my, I, I had another uncle here in oh, New okay. Jersey, not the, not the first one. And, and this uncle was finally able to give me a helping hand and he was able to give me a room, which I would share with two of my little cousins while I was going to the school. Okay. Uh, and, he, and that's all he was able to do for me. He said, I can give you a place, but uh, the rest is up to you. You, you go to school, you pay for it and, and, and you do what you need to. Sure. I took that offer. I came here. I gave it all I had, and and I did well. And this is where my life takes another turn. So now I'm finally able to get decent jobs. Sure. My first first job after that was for a software company. Okay. So in my mind, I was at home again. This is the stuff that I enjoyed so much. Sure. So were you now, a developer there, or what was your role at the software company? I started as, as tech support, but then okay. I moved up immediately uh, to development role. Okay, interesting. And, and fixing, fixing migration issues that um, their software had created. Right. So it evolved. It evolved relatively fast. And another thing that happened, Kevin, is if you're an immigrant, you don't have a whole lot of friends in the beginning. So sure. I had all this spend time. And what I would do with my spare time is exactly what I did when I was 16, use it to learn some more about technology. Right. So for example, uh, I, I had no place to go uh, for my vacation. So for my vacation, I would pick up a programming book and finish the whole book and learn a new programming language in that one week. Wow, that's right. awesome. That's incredibly fast. Like for people that don't know, like learning a new language that quick and going through a whole book, like... That's not easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to be wired for it, and, yep. and I was. You know, I enjoyed it. There was some kind of joy that uh, that I had 
in the process. Sure. And uh, another good thing was this company would pay for any education that I wanted. Oh, awesome. So I started I started going after all this technology education. For example, I wanted to be a DBA. So I went to Oracle directly wow. and I learned how to be a DBA from them. They're the ones creating database software. So sure. there's no better way to learn from them directly. Sure. So, so I'm going to fast forward here, you know, about uh, 10 years of doing that. I had 30 plus certifications in my name. So you worked at that I company learned... for 10 years or a bunch of different software companies? A bunch of different companies. Okay, you know, okay. I, I jumped from that company to another, but I continued my practice of continuously learning and sure, evolving. Sure. And as a result, you know, I was able to accumulate a lot of knowledge. So, in other words, I was able to see the full picture. Mm -hmm. I had learned about all different aspects of technology, not just programming. Okay. Sure. So, I started to realize that I could I could create. A technology company all by myself yeah and that's basically what happened so you know I'm fast forwarding 10 years of evolution here sure but the to make the long story short this the summary is that I was able to create privy technology all by myself no that's awesome and I think it's important to kind of stress that you know I think a lot of people getting into the tech space or want to do their own startup it can take you know years or in your case like a decade before you kind of are, feel comfortable enough to launch something. And, and so I think the trick is just get started, right? Because it can be a long journey. And like I've been doing, I've been in technology for 20 years, right? And I'm, it sounds like you've been in it at least a couple of decades as, as well. So, you know, you never know where it's going to go, right? And and it's there's not that many over, true overnight successes where, you know, you build something over in a weekend and you're a millionaire, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, people think that it works that way, but it doesn't. You no. know, the 10 years that I fast forwarded, the technology was created back in 2006, and it was way advanced and ahead of its time. Sure. We lost a lot of men because of a wrong partner. You know, the guy that I partnered with took a wrong turn in life, and he became an alcoholic and created a lot of problems in the company. And it's not easy to get rid of a, of a partner. It depends upon how your operating agreement is written. Sure. Uh, it wasn't easy to get rid of him, and it... We wasted a lot of time. So you're absolutely correct. You know, overnight success maybe happens in movies, but not in real life that easily. Yeah, and no. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, no, I, I think you have like a really inspiring story. And, and, and that's kind of why I wanted to have you on the show, because I, I think, you know, obviously, like, I, hopefully that it motivates other people to do kind of kind of follow the same kind of path that you did, right? Like, you came here basically with nothing and, and you built this this startup and, and you're doing well and, you know, like, it's it's incredible and it's awesome and it's an inspiring story. I appreciate that. Thank you. And we do, uh, we do try to help the planet and humanity as much as we can. That's kind of the component built into Privy. Sure. And as we progress this conversation, you'll get to see some of those things. Yeah, so maybe let's let's kind of get into like what is Privy and and why you started it. Okay, so about Privy. So Kevin, my mission is to live this planet better than I found it. Okay. Now, in order to do that, I would have to contribute something to mankind in some way. Sure. And what I can contribute is my technology knowledge. Maybe I can use it to do something worthwhile to make life easier for mankind. And that's kind of what we are doing here with Privy. Okay, so interesting. Let me explain this further. It's obvious that cell phones are the most powerful and most personal devices of today. Yep. So ask yourself this question. If you had the ability to reach over 6 billion cell phones worldwide and be able to deliver content in the form of videos, audios, pictures, or text messages, would that help you spread your message? Oh, for or sure. Or would it grow your business? Now, would it also help you generate more revenue? Oh, of course, yeah, for sure. And would it also allow you to maybe fundraise if you're a nonprofit? Absolutely. For okay. sure, yep. So, so the answer to this question is yes. Sure. And if the answer is yes, then Privy can help you. Okay, interesting. So let me explain this even further. Yeah. So there are 6 billion cell phones in the world. 
Okay. Yeah. That's... How do you reach? How do you reach all these cell phones? They're powerful. They're very, very powerful. It's the most powerful tool that we have today. For sure. But how do you reach these cell phones? That's the question. Now, most most companies, most organizations, most brands think that writing an app would be the way. Right. And they're correct to an extent. Mm-hmm. But the fact is. Only 35% of those 6 billion phones have internet on them. For sure, yeah. Okay? So you can't reach 65% of the phones with an app. Yep. However, there is one way to reach them all. Okay? Now, there's another problem with apps, too, which I'm going to mention at this point. You write an app. It takes a lot of time and effort to write one. Sure. And you have to write them for each platform okay so you got to write one for iphones you have to write another one for android and so on yep you have to maintain all these different apps on different platforms okay yep and you still can't reach the entire market yep there is one way to reach all these phones everyone knows about this all of these phones have the text and mms capability (laughs) right Okay. For those who don't know, MMS is just basically picture and video and audio messaging. That's correct. That's correct. So every phone comes pre-installed with this app. Whether they have internet or not, everybody uses texting. And texting is very powerful. How is it powerful? 95% of the text messages are opened within the first few seconds of being received. Really? It's that so high? Message- Interesting. I didn't realize yeah, it was that high. high. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so your message is actually seen by people. Text promotion, so if you send a coupon via text message or MMS, the redemption rate for those coupons is 10 times higher than any other digital promotion. Interesting. Best of all, there is no need to download or install any apps because what happens with apps is people are kind of uh, uh, protective of their phones. Right. Okay? Which is why a lot of the apps are downloaded and then they're abandoned after initial use. Yep. Okay. Uh, so my point is, texting is very powerful, and it's simple. Everybody knows about it. Then how come everyone's not using it for commercial purposes? Interesting. Because there are some challenges with it. Number one challenge is people don't know how to do it. Right. Okay? Yep. Therefore, we are here. We can. It's really easy to do with our platform. There are also additional challenges, such as, you know, texting is 160 characters. That's not a whole lot of space. No. So the first thing that I did with Privy is I said, you know, this 160 character thing has to change. So we stretched over text messages and made them 5,000 characters long. Okay. Interesting. So, like, maybe without getting kind of too technical, did you, like, how did you guys go, like, how do you do that, I guess? Or is it it's just all tech-based? Yes. Um, the 160-character limitation actually comes from uh, short code technology. So if you use short code technology, you're limited to that 160 character because they sell. They make short code technology makes their money by uh, charging per message. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you want to charge per message, then you want to cut that message into 150 character chunks so you, you make a lot more money. Sure. You're not going to make a whole lot, a lot of money if you offer 5,000 character long text messages, okay? So I come from a different viewpoint. I, I want to make this friendly, user-friendly and easy. So that's one of the first things I did. Okay, the next thing we did was if you've used picture messaging or video messaging, there's a limit of about 300 kilobytes. You right. can only fit a video 20, 30 seconds long into that. So yep. our, our MMS messages or picture messages or video messages, what we did was we created a methodology to embed a full resolution video into MMS messages. Oh, interesting. Video top here, okay? To put a cherry on top, what's another problem with texting an MMS? It's not sexy. It's just too plain Jane. Okay. Right. Yep. So we created it. We we created this module to solve different challenges in life, and these modules are beautiful. They look like apps, but they're not really apps. And and we integrated those modules with the texting and MMS messages that we deliver. 
to put the cherry on top, we added full transaction processing capability. So now oh, wow. you could actually sell content. Okay, you could sell content, you could sell merchandise, tickets, you could fundraise, you could do all this utilizing the power of texting and MMS. So, so wait, just sorry, just let's step back a second. So, you say translate. So basically, can I put my message in, you know, English, for example, and then I can say, you know, translate this into whatever languages I want, or I need to put in the specific language for the, you know, written in the, the language that I'm trying to, uh, you know, send the message in? So right now, out of the box, uh, texting would support the Latin characters, okay? Mm. So many languages right. are already uh, supported in that way. Now, if you want to deliver messages to Chinese cell phones in Chinese language, there is additional programming that we have to do, and we haven't gotten into that yet. Okay, okay, okay? it's coming. But majority of majority of the countries now understand English. It's a primary language. Uh, right. You could write Spanish using the Latin characters pretty easily, and that would go without a problem. Okay, our messages are delivered. We deliver messages in over 140 countries right now. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, but it is eventually it's on our task list to uh, tackle the language issue. So you could actually type a message in a different language and then deliver it in a different language. Sure. Okay? Yeah, no, that's tricky. Like it sounds kind of, you know, oh, well, it's easy, but it that's actually really like, quite challenging. And that's why I was like, that's why I asked about it because I was like, if you guys solve that already, that's impressive. But yeah, if it's coming, that's awesome. So there is, you know, you're running a business. You have to keep in mind supply and demand. For sure. There hasn't been too much of a demand for it, although it has come up a few times, but it's not a big demand. When it becomes right. a demand, then we will certainly have to resolve that challenge as well. Oh, it makes sense. And, and, you know, I think that's a really good point is you're, you're, you're taking user feedback now that you, you have a, like something out and it's going. And just because like somebody like myself is like, that's really cool, that doesn't mean that you should rush off and implement it, right? If your users aren't saying they desperately need this, then you might push it off for months or maybe you'll never build it. Right, right. And you know, also something to keep in mind, Kevin, is that we're conditioned to think that solutions have to be complicated. Sure. And, and that, that's not the case with life. You know, life is generally simple. Uh, the best things in life are free. I mean, we're breathing all this air for free, aren't we? Yep. So it's kind of the same with texting and MMS because it's available so easily and everybody uses it. But but if you think about it, it's incredibly powerful. And when you when you remove some of the limitations associated with it, when you make it sexy and combine it with modules and also add transaction processing to it, now you can so now you can solve some challenges for sure. Okay, some big challenges, and that's kind of what we do here with Prism. No, I, I think that's awesome. So maybe do you want to kind of cover what people are using Privy for? Sure. So Privy, the company, owns two different brands. Okay. So we have two different websites. Uh, one is goprivy.com. And I'll post that in the, the show notes is- too. Just so if people listening okay. right now on um, the radio, you know, they're driving or whatnot, I'll post it online at buildingthefutureshow.com. Okay. So it, the first website is goprivy.com, and the other website is imobileinteractive.com. Another okay. way to get in touch with us, uh, Kevin, is to text imobile or goprivy, that's G-O-P-R-I-V-I, to 234-244-7283. Okay. Don't do that when now, you're let, driving let if you're listening. Explain... <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's very true. Very true. Uh, let me let me explain why two different brands. Sure. Everybody's familiar with social media today. It's for sure. a very popular thing and we've been pursuing that for quite some time. And it's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. So Privy platform provides a codified way to monetize on your social media fans. So okay. who, who is it for? It's for anyone with a large following. So if you're a celebrity, athlete, public figure, politician, popular brand, nonprofit, or even a social organization, you have some following on social media. For sure, yep. If you, if you want to monetize on this fans, talk to us about it. Because we have created 
a codified system to take those fans and monetize on them. Now, social media is great, okay? You got millions of fans on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Snapchat and all the other, uh, Instagram and all of that. Uh, when you post things, you get a lot of likes and a lot of visibility and a lot of content and a lot of comments. Sure. But monetizing those fans is not as easy. Yep. And it's not codified. So other other system will do that for you. Okay. Now another challenge that happens with social media is how many different platforms can you manage? Okay. You've got to have a presence on Facebook and then Twitter and then Instagram and then Snapchat. You could keep going and going and going. Yeah, it, it could be a full time job, like nine to five, Monday to Friday. Like just even promoting the the, the radio show and trying to interact with people. It, it's it's a lot of work. So I, I totally, totally understand the problem that you guys are trying to solve because it's a legitimate problem. And the, and I'm not like a huge brand. So I can't even imagine if I was a big sports company or, you know, a celebrity or whatnot and trying to keep everything updated. It's a lot of work. You might even have a team of people and a lot of companies and big people do have a team of people full time that manage all that stuff. That's correct. That's correct. So what we do with our preview platform is we take all of those different sources and we aggregate them into a central mobile database. Okay. So going forward, within one database, you can manage all you need to manage. Okay. And mobile database is the most powerful out of all. For sure. That's very cool. So that's preview. Now what about iMobile? Okay. Yeah. So iMobile platform, iMobile platform is, is designed to help any brick and mortar business solve their sales and marketing challenges. Now, what's a brick and mortar business? Well, if you drive down your main street, all the businesses you see are brick and mortar businesses, your restaurants, your spas and salons and all of those. Okay. What are their challenges right now? Well, they have problem generating awareness and driving traffic. Sure. They have a challenge targeting effectively and retaining customers long term. And they also spend a lot of money on uh, marketing without enough uh, return on investment. Mm -hmm. They also don't have a very good sales conversion from uh, all the other marketing methods. So iMobile platform is designed to solve those challenges uh, within one platform. Right. Very cool. So how do I, you know, if I'm a celebrity or I'm a brick and mortar business like how do i go about um kind of signing up and what what's the process that i need to go through to actually create an account and and get started on either platform okay so if you're a celebrity and a large brand you would work with the privy brand so you go to goprivy.com okay get in touch with us that's goprivy g-o-p-r-i-v-i.com when you get in touch with us uh, we would have a dedicated account manager assigned to work with you, and we would have a marketing team that's going to work with you, look at your, your needs, study your needs, and then we would start converting your popularity into a group that can be monetized. Okay, and then what what's the price range on that? Like, is there kind of a bit, like different packages I pick from, or, or how does that work? Well, you're going to jump out of uh, out of your chair if I tell you. Okay. It's it's absolutely free. Interesting. To sign wow. up to the platform. Preview platform comes free. When you have a large following and you join the preview platform, it is absolutely free to get started with. Okay, okay? that's awesome. We are a, yeah, we are a performance based company. Meaning, if your account performs, then we're gonna take a cut of the revenue. Right, which is which is awesome and and you know very very cool that you guys do that, right? Mm-hmm. And that shows that you're serious about your business, right? If I wanted to just charge you a friend for everything, then I obviously don't know how to make it successful for you. Sure. Okay. If I can make it successful, then I will make some money. And that actually proves that we're serious about doing this business. Sure. Okay. Uh, for iMobile, you would go to iMobileInteractive.com and the uh, same process get in touch with us it's a very iMobile is very easy to manage it's designed for brick and mortar and people that don't know a whole lot about uh, technology so it's a very user friendly interface if you know how to send an email you could work with iMobile platform okay it's as simple as sending an email 
No, no, that's awesome. Um, so I know um, I'm just kind of curious um, I'm on, on pre-interview chat. I, I was curious about kind of um, some of the ticketing stuff that you guys do. Um, do you kind of maybe want to cover a, a bunch more of the, the campaigns and, and stuff that you guys kind of support through your platforms? Yes. yes. So earlier I mentioned that we wanted to provide a complete solution. We didn't want to serve you coffee without a cup. Right. Okay. So right. we don't just, we don't just deliver we don't just deliver a text message. We create a complete experience. Now let me explain this. Les Brown is a motivational speaker. Yep. He's one of one of the recent customers that we signed. Okay. Awesome. Now Les Brown is is valuable. You know his information is life changing and valuable. He's one of my mentors from the early days. Oh, awesome. So, so I you know every time I listen to him, I'm like, this guy has such valuable information. He can help so many people, but he doesn't have a way to reach out to all these cell phones. I do. Right. So now I'm connected with him. And what we're going to do is, you know, typically Les Brown would host all these seminars where you could uh, fly to wherever the seminar is and attend it live. What we're going to do is, first, we're going to sell tickets for that seminar using our platform. We have a ticketing module which would allow people to text to Les Brown, buy the ticket, the ticket would be delivered to your cell phone, so when you show up for the event, you can redeem it directly on the cell phone, which eliminates ticketing fraud and long lines. Sure. Okay? So no, that's, I, that's I, a complete experience. But I love it doesn't that. stop there. Yeah, it doesn't stop there, though. Okay. You know, once you attend the seminar, what about all the people that could not attend the seminar? Sure. Can you deliver the video of that seminar to all the other people for a cheaper price that could not attend? Because right. the information is valuable. So, yes, that's exactly what we're going to do over our platform. And it doesn't stop there. Because we have a merchandise module as well, Les Brown has um, audios and, and videos and other merchandise that he can also sell over our platform. So we've taken something good. We've taken a person that does a whole lot of good, and we have given him the ability to spread his wings and reach out to a much larger audience Okay. Well, global, um, global, really. Like, basically, I can attend a seminar globally even if I'm not there physically. Absolutely, and you could also live stream some of these, um, some of these things. One of one of the potential customers that we're talking to, they're involved in medical surgery. Oh, and interesting. They have identified, yeah, they've they've identified a need to stream these surgeries live to all the medical students. Oh, like in classrooms and, we, and whatnot. That's correct. Oh, and, that's and we are, very, very imagine cool. That, imagine that. So we could live stream this surgery to people's cell phones. Okay, and it can be projected on the big screen too. I also want to give you a little more. Sure. No, I, 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 this is fascinating to me. Like the, you, like when, to be 100% honest with you, what, what really fascinated me about is the whole like on-demand kind of ticket thing and then being in or be able to get content you know, and, and kind of order merch and, and, and that, like, I, I love that idea. And that's kind of why um, I wanted to have you on the show. The fact that you guys are doing all this other stuff is, is cool to me. So yeah, keep going. This is, this is great. Right. So then we're also going to create a personal club for Les Brown. You know, imagine if you, if you got daily or weekly wisdom from Les Brown in mm -hmm. the form of video or audio or even a simple text message, something motivational and inspiring delivered directly to your cell phone. Would that be of value? And the answer is yes. For sure. So we're going to create the subscription club for Les Brown and people would pay a monthly price to join this club and they would start receiving valuable life-changing material directly on their cell phone without them having to download or install any apps. That was okay? very cool. Uh, we also... We also help a lot of nonprofits, and the way that works is, of course, we can fundraise using our uh, donations API. That's okay. easy to do. People understand how that works. Sure. But here's a new feature that we've added, and we call it Live Scroll. Okay, okay? interesting. So imagine, imagine a fundraiser, a live dinner fundraiser, okay? That, that happens a lot. Around the country, there are all these dinners, dinner events hosted for fundraising. Sure. So this would happen in a live 
situation where the nonprofit would ask you to pledge your donations live. And mm -hmm. as you pull out your cell phone and start pledging those donations using our donations module, the, the activities that are occurring, the donations that are coming in, would be projected on a big screen. Oh, that's for very everyone cool. To see. What does that do? That gets people into that competition mode. It has been proven to increase the amount of funds raised for nonprofits. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. That's and, and awesome. We have plans to do a whole lot more with this live scroll. We're going to make it so exciting that it becomes the entertainment for the evening. So not okay. only you're raising funds, but you're making it fun. It's not a boring activity anymore. Sure. And, and realistically, you know, um, every, like you said, pr pretty much everybody has a phone nowadays, especially in, you know, if you're at a charity thing, you probably have a pretty good phone and you're, uh, you're constantly wanting to, uh, you know, and you're rousing your, uh, friends and other people sitting with you that, you know, you're outbidding them or donating more. And no, that makes a lot of sense. That's interesting. Um, yeah, and even even without the live scroll, uh, when we did a fundraiser for Save a Warrior, the largest donation we got was about five thousand dollars. Oh wow! From one transaction, yeah. So people do love to help, and and we're providing a platform to be able to do that. Sure. So, is there any other kind of features that you want to talk about that are that are coming, or or just kind of wait until they launch? Um, some of the information would be proprietary, but, uh, you know, what I can tell you, uh, Kevin, for sure, is that we're a tech company, and we understand that we have to evolve fast to sure. stay ahead of the curve, and we have development plans for years to come. Sure. Okay. Uh, my goal is to just make this, make this platform better and better and better and better, constantly. No, totally. So, so, did, so sorry, um, go ahead. Uh, so we would have the most amount of features at the most reasonable price. Right. So are you guys kind of self-funded? Did you guys raise a bunch of money? Um, are you guys just, you know, making enough money off of your, your service to, to uh, I guess, continue development? Uh, we have investors. Okay, okay. That's, that's... And, and with, with, the, with the blessing from above and my investors, we would keep going for as long as we can, for as far as we can, and once we get there, we would go even further. Yeah, no, I well, um, just based on kind of where how you got to where you are now, I I, I don't see why you wouldn't continue uh, success and and going for uh, you know kind of the future and and being successful. Um, is there anything kind of else that you want to kind of cover? Any success stories or, or kind of other uses of uh, Privy or iMobile? Sure. So, some of the things that, that I want to mention is uh, our API module that I talked about, you know, this uh, the fundraising capability and ticketing capability, uh, they're universal in nature. Okay. We've created this API so that they would fit onto any platform. Okay, for example, the same ticketing API can be used to buy tickets from an iPhone, Android phone, laptop, PC, Mac, iPad, or even your TV. As long as you have an internet browser, right. you could use this API to, uh, to perform the transaction. Okay, that's very cool. And I'm assuming you have like developer documentation for people that are interested in uh, using the API? Oh, it's, it's very, very simple. We help you. Yes, we do have documentation, and we also help you set it up and test it and make sure that you're good to go. No, very you're cool. Never that's, that's awesome. Um, okay. Um, no, go ahead. Sorry. And we also, you know, we, what we do with this API, is, uh, Kevin, is that they're fully branded. Okay, because your brand is important. If you're a celebrity, your brand. Okay, so you, is so it doesn't have like the privy brand kind of all over it, or. <clears throat> nope you you have the capability to customize it. You you can pick and choose what you want to show on that uh, screen, and it preserves your branding, your logo, okay, awesome. and all of that. So you guys are totally in the background then. Uh, 
totally with uh, with powered by okay. Yeah, Mobile fair enough. That makes sense. You guys need some sort of publicity. That's so uh, I'm kind of curious. Like, do you want to maybe cover a couple more examples of of people using the product either from the Privy or the iMobile side of things? Yes. So I briefly touched upon uh, you mm -hmm. know Sable Warrior. Uh, Sable Warrior is a wonderful sure. nonprofit. Uh, what they do is um, a lot of these veterans that mm -hmm. come back from war, they yep. have PTSD, uh, and and they are very suicidal. So I think there is a disturbing statistic that I I don't know the exact, but at least one warrior killed. Yeah, that's really sad. Day. It's probably even even higher than that. Yes, yeah, so it is that. Now this nonprofit has a program with virtually 100% success wow. with PTSD, and we did a fundraiser for them. Within a couple of days, we were able to uh, save more wow. than uh, 10 warriors, and more importantly, using our platform, they were able to get so many volunteers That's to support awesome. the initiative. Mm -hmm. We also have a we also have an individual with a lot of knowledge in the sport industry, and that's his passion. He's okay. all about sports, and he is, he is selling his content uh, over our platform and generating over ten thousand dollars. Oh wow, dollars that's awesome! Month. Okay, so it, and, and that's my message. You know, if you have something of value, we are in the information age today. That means information sure. is valuable. You can sell information. You can sell content. If you have a valuable video or an audio or any other form of information, you could sell it and you could make money on it. You know, you don't have to give things away free of charge. That's the challenge with yep. social media. You, know, with, you could put content on social media, but you don't necessarily have a way to, to make money on it. Now, something that takes you 20, 30, 40 years to learn you don't have to no, give that totally. away for free. Okay. And and that's kind of what we've done. You know, we've provided a codified way uh, to uh, monetize on this. You know, for example, if you're a celebrity, you have millions of fans out there. And fans want nothing more than to uh, learn more yep. about your lifestyle. What is it that you're doing? What kind of thoughts do you have? You know, do you... Uh, what what kind of food do you eat? What's going on in your life? Your fans are very interested yep, in learning totally. about all that. So what, we, what we've done with our subscription club is we've removed all the middle pieces. It's just right. you no, and awesome. your fans. Okay. So right from right from the privy back office, you send a message and it gets delivered to the cell sure. phone of your fans. Okay. Now, that message could be anything personal that's happening in a celebrity's life. Maybe the celebrity mm -hmm. started dating, and, and they want to share that information and that wonderful news with their fans. Okay, Or maybe the celebrity is wondering what uh, he or she should wear at the Golden Globes, yeah. And they could send out the picture of the outfit and get user or get fan opinion. In okay, All that is possible on our platform, and it's actually sure, already no. being done. I, I think that's that's really interesting, and I think the thing that's interesting about kind of your platform, and I'm I'm curious to know um, your thoughts on this. I think most people are genuinely fine ha and happy to pay for content. It's just they want it convenient for them, and why people you know have kind of torrented stuff or or downloaded stuff illegally from the internet is because it's not convenient. But if you say you know I want all the news or I want a shirt or, or a video or, or whatever from a certain, you know, artist or celebrity or company, you know, and if you can get it almost instantly right to your phone, people are willing to pay for that. It's just when, you know, they can't get it for months or whatever because of some, you know, law or legislation or, or something, you know, people just get kind of annoyed, right? But when it gets instantly sent to them, you know, they're more than happy to say, yeah, I'll pay a few dollars or $10 or whatever that amount is. Do you, have you found that, I guess? <clears throat> That's correct. Absolutely, absolutely. And we, we, we've surprised ourselves mm -hmm. with this, okay? Uh, you just brought up a very good point. We did a market study to see if people are willing to pay uh, okay. for voting. 
now this is kind of ridiculous. I'm going to vote for someone I like and I have to pay for it. Mm, Isn't sure. it ridiculous? But believe me, that actually happened. On our platform, people actually paid to vote for a celebrity I guess. that they like. Yeah. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's absolutely true. And, and Kevin, you brought up something very interesting here. Okay, uh, user involvement. When the content, it is, the beauty of text and MMS is it's sure. push technology. In order for you to see something on, on uh, Snapchat or Facebook or Twitter, you got to download yep. and have that app. Okay, and then you got to open that app and see what's going on in there. Totally. With texting, the content yeah. comes to you. Okay, and you have with our our platform, you have a complete ability to decide what kind of content yep. you want to receive. No, that's awesome. One of the most beautiful things here is that it's illegal to spam yep. people on their cell phones via text, okay? and that's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. see what happened to email. Email used to be a powerful tool, and now you get thousands of emails from all different sources, and you have no control over it, which kind of uh, dilutes the value of it. So the beautiful thing about texting is you're not going to be able to send. So you have to offer your subscribers a selection, and that's what our platform does. Here are the 10 things that we're offering. Yeah, you that's can choose nice. what you want. So one yeah, once that selection is done, the content comes to you. You have to do nothing. So if you subscribe to Les Brown, for example, on a regular interval, you wake up in the morning and you have the inspirational message waiting for you. It's totally. very convenient. And that's no, I, I, I love stuff like that. Like, you know, th that's that's the big thing for me, like being being in technology, uh, like, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm married and, and my wife and I have, have a daughter now. And sometimes like, I don't know if they're out for the evening or something and I want to watch a, a movie sometimes like if I can't just instantly give a few dollars to rent the thing and stream it to the device I'm on, I'm kind of over it. Right. And they, they almost like lose my money, you know, and I, I love the idea of kind of on demand content and I love the idea of just being able to say, well, I, I like these people or, or brand or whatnot. And if they have like a deal or a coupon or, or, you know, they have an inspirational video or, or something that I'm interested in, just send it to me. I don't want to go search for it anymore. I just want it to come to me. And I think that is extremely valuable. And, and I think what you guys are doing is, is very cool and very innovative. You just said it. You know, you, you got it. You got it, Kevin. That's exactly it. You you don't have time to go looking for these things. You know, you want to set your preferences exactly. once and it's done. Okay, and it, it's also very easy to opt out of this. You know, if you wanted to say, okay, this is it, I, I am done, all you have to do is text and yeah, stop, exactly. and it's done. Okay, so it, 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 it's so simple. It's so simple, and that's the beauty of it. So you're understanding this. No, I, I um, Matesh, you've been, this has been awesome, and, and sadly we're out of time. So maybe just kind of clo to close the show, um, once again, let's tell the listener where they can find kind of uh, Privy and uh, iMobile online. And then if you want to promote any social links, either for either company or, or yourself, uh, do you want to mention those as well? Uh, sure. So the way to get in touch with is you can always find us on the web. Just go to goprivy.com. That's G-O-P-R-I-V-I.com. You can also go to imobileinteractive.com. That's imobileinteractive.com, one word. Alternatively, you could text either imobile or go privy to 234-244-7283. And that's the way to get in touch with us. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. You can awesome. find us there as well. Um, is imobile like E-Y-E -E or just the letter I? Okay. I as in iPhone, so I am okay, OB. Perfect. Just wanted to clarify that. No, um, Matesh, this has been awesome. Thanks again for taking time out of your uh, busy day to you know be on the show, and I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to kind of following you guys and kind of the new features and and services that you guys roll out over 2016. Thank you, Kevin. It was my pleasure, and feel free to reach out to us, and uh, uh, we would we would be here to help you in any possible Perfect. way we can.
and also your perfect listeners. well thanks again uh we'll be in touch soon and uh yeah talk talk later okay bye thank you bye thanks for listening to the show I'm also going to be at the Startup Expo in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, February 16th and 17th, recording shows. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com. Until next time, keep building the future.